Good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening. Hi, how are you? How's everybody? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Hi. teacher. Good to see you. All right. Let's see who's with us tonight. Rufino Amilcar, Claudia Gaeta, Gladys Campos, Jenny Sanchez, Luis Enriquez, and Luis Alonso. Okay, everybody, welcome once again. Well, um, we're starting a new month today. It's November the 1st. I'm going to share the screen with you now. There it is. Okay. So once again, welcome everybody. It's uh, Inglés Intermedio Modulo 3. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. Once again, it's Intermediate 3, Session 14. And today is November 1st of 2022 or 2022, as you prefer. So what are we going to do today? Basically, we have to continue with the topic we started yesterday. And the topic from yesterday was present and real conditionals, OK? So today, basically, we're going to have a review of the topic. We're going to check the information for a second time. Also, there's the first exercise that we solved yesterday that we are not going to solve again. We're just going to check it and take it as an example. And after that, we have some more exercises. Also, we're going to study vocabulary of uh, opposites, OK? That's the second thing um, I hope we can do today, which is opposites or antonyms, as you want to call it. So let's start. First objective, by the end of this class, participants will learn and understand the use of unreal conditional sentences in if clauses. So nothing new. It's the same thing we studied yesterday. So we're going to have a general review, OK? general review of this. Present and real conditional. It's the same information from yesterday. So Dan likes fast cars, but he doesn't have one, OK? And why is that? Because he doesn't have enough money. That's the problem, OK? He likes Ferraris, but Ferraris are very expensive. He can't buy one. He doesn't have enough money. So the sentence, the present and real conditional sentence is, if he had the money, he would buy a fast car, all right? What does this mean? Remember, usually have is past, but in this sentence, have is not past. Have refers to the present, but it refers to the present hypothetically. It's an imaginary situation. So when we say, if he had the money, that means if he had the money now, not in the past, now. But the problem is he doesn't have it. Present and real conditional sentences have two parts. One is a hypothetical condition and the other one is an imaginary result. The hypothetical condition includes if plus the subject plus a verb in past. The verb in past can be in affirmative or negative form and also question form. The imaginary result includes a subject, would or could, also might is possible. And because these are modal auxiliaries, and there is a rule that we have studied before, the verb that follows is always in base form, always, always, no exceptions. So for the hypothetical condition, we start with if, then the subject could be any subject, I, you, he, she, it, we, they, or a name. OK, Rosa, Alejandra, Francisco, etc., etc. And then we need to use a verb in past form, like have, knew, lived. You can also use them in negative form. Didn't have, didn't know, didn't live, etc. For the verb be, we use where. Was is also possible for the subjects I, he, she, and it. But if you want to be formal and grammatically correct, then where is your best option in present and real conditional sentences only? And also, you can use could, which is the past of can. 
for the imaginary result, then you need the subject again, which could be any subject, I, you, he, she, it, we, or they, and then would or could, also might is possible, as you can see here. And after that, a verb in base form. That's the structure that you need for present and real conditional sentences. Now, something that I mentioned just a moment ago is the use of the verb be in the hypothetical condition. We can use where, but was is also possible as I am going to explain in the next slide. If I were you, si yo fuera tú, if I were you, you can say for the subjects, I, he, she, or it, if I was, if he was, if she was, if it was. Como sabemos, el pasado del verb be para I, he, she, it es was. Ok, pero en estos casos podemos ocupar where y de hecho where es mejor porque es gramaticalmente correcto. Was es informal para estos casos. You can say if I were, if he were, if she were, if it were. Like if I were you, si yo fuera tú. So you have some examples. It's not a very nice place. If I were you, I wouldn't go there. Si yo fuera tú, no iría ahí. Okay? It would be nice if the weather was better. You can also say, if the weather were better. Sería bueno o sería bonito, ¿verdad? Si las condiciones del tiempo fueran mejores. And the last one is a question. What would Tom do if he were here? You can also say, what will Tom do if he was here? But again, that's informal. If you want to be formal, you can use where, not was. Okay? So, ¿qué haría Tom si él estuviera aquí? So that's the case with the verb e. Now, again, uh, we have some examples. The hypothetical condition uses if plus the subject and the verb in past. And the imaginary result uses the subject, would or could, might is also possible, and the verb in base form. Why a verb in base form? Because would and could are model auxiliaries. And as we studied, model auxiliaries have two rules. Number one, they don't have a special form for he, she, it. Number two, the verb that goes after the model is always in base form. If you remember last week, that's what we studied. So examples. If Mike had the money, he will buy a car. Let me just change uh, some animations right here to make this better. Okay. Just a second, please. Okay. So if Mike had the money, he would buy a car. You have the structure right here. If the subject, Mike, the verb in past, had. If Mike had the money, then the result. He, the subject, would, and then a verb in base form, buy a car. Si Mike tuviera el dinero, se compraría un auto veloz. Se compraría un auto, perdón. Veloz no dice por ningún lado. Se compraría un auto. No tiene dinero para ningún tipo de auto. So, if Mike had the money, he would buy a car. That's an imaginary situation. This situation does not reflect reality. Okay? It's hypothetical in nature. So, he doesn't have the money. So, he will not buy a car. That's the reality. Okay? Second example, if we didn't have six children, we will have more money. Okay, again, the subject if, sorry, you have the word if, the subject we, the verb in past, you can use the negative form, didn't have. Okay, affirmative, had. Negative, didn't have. If we didn't have six children, comma, then the subject for the imaginary result, we, and then would, and then a verb in base form, have. If we didn't have six children, we would have more money. But this is the reality. We have six children, 
So we don't have much money. We have to spend a lot of money on the children. Okay. Next example. If I could cook, I wouldn't order food every day. Si yo pudiera cocinar, no ordenaría comida todos los días. So, same structure. If, then the subject I, then the verb in past form, could. If I could cook. Imaginary result. Subject I would, could be negative also. I wouldn't, and the verb in base form, order. I wouldn't order food every day. Si se fijan, tanto el hypothetical condition puede estar en forma afirmativa como negativa. Y también el result, el imaginary result, puede ser afirmativo o negativo. Si usted quiere volverlo negativo, solo dice wouldn't, como en el ejemplo. If I could cook, I wouldn't order food every day. But I can't cook. That's why I order food every day. That's the reality. Okay? Next. If Ellen didn't have so many problems, she would be happier. But the reality is, she has a lot of problems. So, she isn't very happy. That's the reality. The first sentence here is hypothetical. It's imaginary. If Ellen didn't have so many problems, she would be happier. Si Ellen no tuviera tantos problemas, sería más feliz. Pero la realidad es que sí tiene muchos problemas y por lo tanto no es muy feliz. The last one. If we had a car, we could travel more. But the reality is we don't have a car, so we can't travel much. We can travel, but not as much as we wished we could. So what I want you to know and what I want you to have clear is this, the structure. For the condition, you need if, the verb, the subject, I'm sorry, and the verb in past form. For the result, you need a subject, would, could, or might. And then the verb in base form. That's the structure. So nothing new. This is what we studied yesterday. And also, very important, the hypothetical condition and the imaginary result don't necessarily have to appear in this order. If you say, if Mike had the money, he would buy a car. That is good. But you can also begin with the imaginary result and finish with the hypothetical condition. You can say, Mike would buy a car if he had the money. And the sentence is the same. The meaning doesn't change. We have the exact same meaning, just the order of the clauses is different. Es lo mismo decir, if Mike had the money, he will buy a car. Que decir, Mike will buy a car if he had the money. But there is one difference. Look, if you begin with if, then you will need a comma. As you can see here, I'm going to zoom in. If you begin with if, you need a comma to separate the two clauses. But if you don't begin with if, don't use a comma, okay? That's a rule right there. You begin with if, use the comma. If you don't begin with if, no comma. Another thing, apostrophe D is the contracted form of would. Examples, I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, I'd tell you, which means I would tell you. Si supiera la respuesta, te la diría. Second example, it's raining, so we can't go out. We'd get wet if we went out. We'd get is we would get. Nos mojaríamos si saliéramos. Emma loves living in the city. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. Ella no sería feliz si viviera en el campo. If you didn't have a job, what would you do? Si no tuvieras trabajo, ¿qué harías? And the last one, I'm sorry I can't help you. I'd help you if I could. 
which means I would help you if I could. Te ayudaría si pudiera, pero no puedo. Okay, so I'd help you if I could. It's the same explanation from yesterday. There's the, the exercise, which we saw yesterday also. We are not going to do it again because we did yesterday, but we're going to use it as an example. Okay, you have the first one. I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, I will tell you. Si supiera, la respuesta te la diría. I have a car. Now, I couldn't travel very much if I didn't have a car. No podría viajar mucho si no tuviera carro. I don't want to go out. If I wanted to go out, I would go. Si quisiera salir, si quisiera, si, si quisiera salir, iría. Number four, we don't have a key. If we had a key, we could get into the house. Si tuviéramos una llave, podríamos entrar a la casa. Number five, I'm not hungry. Okay, I am not hungry. The verb be, look. I would have something to eat if I were hungry or if I was hungry. Again, where is grammatically correct and also formal. Was is informal. Okay, so be careful here. ¿Verdad? En este caso sería, comería algo si tuviera hambre. Mucho cuidado, como mencionamos el día de ayer, para mencionar los estados del cuerpo, no ocupamos el verbo tener en inglés sino que se utiliza el verbo el verb be. No se dice tengo hambre, sino estoy hambriento. I am hungry. No se dice tengo sed, sino estoy sediento. I am thirsty. No se dice tengo frío, sino estoy helado o estoy frío. ¿verdad? I am cold, etc. Por eso se utiliza el verbo be. Ok. También para decir que uno eh, tiene razón. No se dice, I have reason. Se dice, I am right. Si uno quiere decir que no tiene la razón, dice, I am wrong. Ok, así que cuidado con eso. Number six, Sue enjoys her work. She loves it. She wouldn't do it if she didn't enjoy it. No lo haría si no lo disfrutara. Number seven, I can't speak any foreign languages. Sorry, he can't speak. He can't speak any foreign languages. If he could speak a foreign language, maybe he would get a better job. Si él pudiera hablar un idioma extranjero, tal vez podría obtener un mejor trabajo. Number eight, you don't try hard enough. No te fuerzas lo suficiente. If you tried harder, you would have more success. Si hicieras un esfuerzo mayor, tendrías mayor éxito. Okay, if you tried. And number nine, I have a lot to do today. If I didn't have so much to do, we could go out. Si no tuviera tanto por hacer, podríamos salir. Now, this is exactly what we studied yesterday. A partir de este punto, ahí nos quedamos. Now, we have some exercises. Okay, we're going to work together, break our rooms. But first, I have a question. Do you have any questions? ¿Alguna pregunta hasta este punto? Algunos creo que no pudieron acompañarnos el día de ayer, pero ya estamos acá. A lo mejor no hemos tenido oportunidad de ver el video de la clase anterior, eh, porque ya se sube un poco tarde, ¿verdad? Y a lo mejor al día siguiente, que es hoy, han estado ocupados. Entonces, si alguien tiene alguna duda sobre este tema, este es un buen momento para preguntar. Do you have any questions? No questions? Okay. No questions then. No question, bitch. Okay, great. Okay, groups of three for the next exercise. We have 15 participants. So let's form the groups. Five groups. Okay. Room one Imelda Sanchez, Luis Alonso Urias, and Luis Enriquez. Room two, Gladys Campos, Griselda Mendoza, and Rufino Amilcar. Room three, Alejandra Magaña, Claudia Iraeta, and Olivia Osorio. Room four, Francisco Isaac, Sonia Guadalupe, and Jenny Sanchez. And room five, 
Estela Lara, Michelle Escobar, and Natalie Alejandra. I'm going to form the breakout rooms. Well, but first I'm going to show you the exercise. Okay. Si se fija en este ejercicio, todo estaba más o menos fácil porque todas iban con if. If I knew, if I didn't have, if I wanted, if we had, if we were, if she didn't enjoy, if he could, if you tried, if I didn't have. En otras palabras, solamente estábamos completando el hypothetical condition. En ningún momento completamos el imaginary result. Ahora, ¿qué pasa con el siguiente ejercicio? Ya se pone más difícil. Porque usted tiene que determinar si es el condition o si es el result el que está completando. Y para cada uno de ellos la estructura es diferente. Vamos a hacer el número uno y el número dos juntos. Veamos. Antes de empezar a trabajar en los breakout rooms. Number one. Well, put the verb in the correct form. If, bla, 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 the money, he will buy a fast car. The subject is he and the verb is have. ¿Cómo nos quedaría eso? Quiero ver, ¿quién se anima? If Natalie. I have. If I had. If he had. If he had. If he had the money, he will buy a fast car. Correct, Natalie. Thank you very much. If he had the money. ¿Por qué vamos a ocupar past simple? La clave está acá. Fíjese bien. En el if. El if es el que nos indica. Ah, dice, dice usted, ahí está el if, lo quiere decir que lo que sigue va en past simple. La otra parte de la oración es donde vamos a ocupar would y el verbo. ¿Ok? Number two. Hannah likes living in a city. Bla, 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 bla. Happy if she lived in the country. Y tenemos en paréntesis, she not be. That means we need to use it in negative form. Who wants to try? ¿Quién quiere intentar esta? Alejandra. Uh, Hannah likes living in a city. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. Correct. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. No sería feliz si viviera en el campo. Entonces, ¿qué tenemos acá? Fíjese bien, ¿verdad? Tiene el espacio vacío, pero luego aquí está if. Ah, ok, esta es la condición, if she lived in the country. O sea que lo que va a completar usted es el resultado. Ahí es donde va a utilizar would y el verbo en forma base. Como era negativo, she wouldn't be. Ok, así que mucho ojo ahí, ¿verdad? Mucho ojo. Um, I'm going to open the breakout rooms now. Please work together. Quiero recalcar también, por favor, eh, en los grupos, a veces entro y los encuentro muy callados, ¿verdad? No, la idea del grupo es precisamente eso, que compartan, que resuelvan el ejercicio juntos, ¿verdad? Que comparen lo que están haciendo y de esa manera también aprender el uno del otro. Como siempre, yo me voy a asomar por cada uno de ellos y les voy a ayudar a eh, hacer correcciones necesarias. Okay, uh, everybody join the breakout rooms. I'm going to send this via WhatsApp. Okay, everybody, the exercise is in WhatsApp right now. You can check it. And I'm going to uh, join the, the rooms to uh, help you and provide feedback. Italian, I'll go. go. I will go. I will go to Italy. Yes. I two thumbs up. Will, will go. Okay. <laughs> hmm. 
Okay. Uh, if I wanted to learn Italian, I would go to Italy. I will go to Italy. Mm -hmm. Yes. I will go to Italy. What about number four? Number four. I didn't tell I didn't... Helen. Okay. You, you. Then it is. Okay. I didn't tell Helen what happened. She'll be angry if she knew. Mm -hmm. She knew. She'd be angry if she knew. Estaría okay. molesta si lo supiera. Saber quisiera, okay. pero bueno. She'd be angry if she knew. Correct. Very good. Okay, I'm going to visit another room. See you. Okay, okay. okay. see you. I gone. I gone. I got this. I go I to go. Italy. I go. I go. Yo voy. No, I go es yo voy. Yo voy a Italia. I go. I go. Ajá. I went. Es, I went. Es, yo fuera. Yo fuera a Italia. Yo diría I I go. Veamos la estructura de la oración, verdad? Dice if Desde ese momento ya podemos ver que está la condición. If I wanted. Si yo quisiera ir a, it a aprender mm -hmm. italiano, iría a Italia. Ahora vamos con el resultado. ¿Cuál es la estructura del resultado? The imaginary result. Es past, past, the past verb is I went. Mm -mm. No. no. Porque el pasado del verbo se ocupa en la condición, pero la condición ya está dada. La condición okay. la indica la palabra if. I would, I would, I would, I would wait. Ah, uh -uh. después de. Gone. I would. Gone. Gone. Or I would uh -huh. go. Después go de would. Go. Es, es la form, uh, it's the it's ah, a verb base. in base form. Uh -huh. base I go. would go. Ah, I would go. Uh -huh. yeah. I would go. La clave está acá. Fíjense bien en mm -hmm. la palabra if. If solo fíjense mm -hmm. localicen la verdad. Dice if. Ah, ahí está el principio. If significa que lo que sigue ahí es la condición. La condición hipotética es la que va a ir en past simple. La otra parte de la oración es el posible resultado, es el resultado imaginario. Ahí es donde va a ocupar would, o si fuese necesario y fuera negativo, wouldn't, y luego el verbo. I would go. I would go, I would to, Italy. go to Italy. Así es, okay. queda. If I wanted to learn Italian, I uh -huh. would go to Italy. Si yo quisiera aprender italiano, iría a Italia. I would, I would go. Uh -huh. Entonces, okay. de nuevo, la clave es esa palabra, if, if, si usted dice, la localiza y dice if, ahí está, ¿eh? entonces lo que sigue mm -hmm. es la condición, o sea, past simple. La otra parte mm -hmm. que puede estar antes o puede estar después es el resultado imaginario. Ahí es donde el, va a ocupar el, would y el verbo en forma base. Ok. Uh -huh. Thank you. Ok. I understand. I understand. Great, great. More understand. <laughs> ok, vamos a okay. ver la número cuatro That's entonces. Va, vamos, de demuéstrenme, the demuéstrenme. Next. The next one, please. The next. I didn't, I didn't tell I Helen what happened. Partamos de eso, dice. I didn't tell Helen what happened. No le conté a Helen lo que, lo que pasó. ¿verdad? A lo mejor es mejor que no sepa mm. ella. Entonces... She'd be angry, que significa yeah. she would be angry if. Uh, she knew. Uh, Correct. She knew. knew. She'd be angry mm -hmm. if she knew. She, she, Se molestaría she knew. si lo supiera. Mm -hmm. si, lo, si lo supiera. Pero como no mm -hmm. sabe, ojos oh, que no ven, corazón que no siente, entonces <laughs> no hay problema. Uh -huh. Ok. 
Thank you. All right. Let's do number five. Hagamos la número cinco. Quiero ver. Veamos, veamos. Ladies. Ladies, ah, uh, ladies, ladies, please. If I'm... Mm -hmm. If... If we, we have... We, ladies? If um, we have... We have mm -hmm. a map. In past, right? If we had a map, I could show mm -hmm. you where I live. Si tuviéramos un mapa, uh -huh. si podría tuviéramos mostrarte un mapa. donde vivo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the idea. El if, esa es la clave. Yes. Okay, I'm going to visit a different room now. See you later. Thank you for your helping, helping, helping us. Thank you for helping us, you say. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> There, if I were you. You in number seven now? Yeah. Okay. So, can you read it, please? Mm -hmm. It's not a. It's not a very good hotel. I wouldn't stay there if I were you. Correct. I wouldn't stay there if I were you. Mm -hmm. Very good. What about number six? Is we live? Is is we live? Oh, well, that's number Social eight. <laughs> no, but what, what uh, about uh, number six. number six? Yeah, number six. You want? No, it's a. Uh, what would you do if mm -hmm. you want a lot mm -hmm. of money? That is correct. What would you do if you won a lot of money? ¿Qué harías si ganaras mucho dinero? What would you do if you won a lot of money? Si ganaras, entiéndase en este sentido, ganar en un concurso o ganar en la lotería, por ejemplo. No ganar trabajando, devengando. So what would you do if you won a lot of money? Si fuera devengando, sería if you earned a lot of money. Okay, very good. All right, ladies, please continue. I'm going to visit a different breakout room now. See you later. Bye. Bye. Could era como Ken con con Wood, algo así, ¿verdad? Yes. Ah, teacher. Entró en el momento exactly. <risa> Estamos viendo eh, the number seven. Uh -huh. eh, nosotros queremos ponerle I won't, won't stay. O podría ser I can't stay. Mm, wouldn't es lo correcto. <coughs> It's not a very good hotel. I wouldn't stay there if I were you. Yo no me quedaría ahí. Si fuera tú. Si usted le pone I couldn't stay, sería no podría, no me, quiero ver, no podría quedarme ahí. No podría. Uh -huh. Entonces ya pierde la lógica de la oración un poquito. Más bien es uh -huh. I wouldn't stay there. If I, I were wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. okay. no me, yo no me, no me quedaría si fuera tú. Les. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok. What about number six? Can you read it? Uh, like six what? What, would you do? what would you do if we if you won? If you won a lot of money. Correct. What would you do if you won okay. a lot of money? Correct. ¿Qué harías si ganaras mucho dinero? Ganar en este, entiéndase aquí, ¿verdad? Por ganar en un concurso, como la lotería, por ejemplo. Si es ganar, devengando, el verbo es earn. Ya es diferente. ¿Cómo? Earn. ¿Cómo? Earn. E-A-R-N. 
R N earn es ganar pero ganar porque uno ha hecho el esfuerzo verdad uh -huh. ganar dinero trabajando por ejemplo earn pero aquí win es se entiende que sería en una especie de concurso okay very good please continue I'm going to visit another breakout room see you in a few minutes okay thank you welcome Hello, ladies. How are you doing? Hi, teacher. Hi, have you finished? Hi, teacher. Yes, teacher, yes. we finished. Ya me imaginaba. <laughs> okay. What about number 12? Can you read it for me, please? If you could change one thing in the world, what, what you will change? It's a question, so you need to change the order of the words. What will you change? What will you change? Uh -huh. Como es pregunta, se cambia. Would you? What would you change? Okay, very good. What about number 11? I don't know anything about cars. If my car broke down, I wouldn't know what to do. That is correct. If my car broke down, I wouldn't know what to do. Si mi auto se averiara, no sabría qué hacer. Right? Very good. What about number 10? I'm not going to take the job. I'll take it if, if the salary were better. I'll take it if the salary were better. That's correct. Alternatively, you can say, I'll take it if the salary was better. That would be a little informal. Very good. Thank you, ladies. I'm going to visit a different room, uh, room right now. So uh, please wait a little bit longer. Okay, everybody, I'm going to give you two more minutes uh, to finish this exercise, and then I'm going to close the breakout rooms so we can check answers. One minute, sorry, one minute. Okay, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now and we're going to check answers. So you will have one minute to come back to the, to the main meeting. Forty five seconds.
25 seconds. 25 seconds. Okay, everybody, um, your turn. Put the verb in the correct form. Number one, if he had the money, he would buy a fast car. Number two, Hannah likes living in the city. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. What about number three? I need a volunteer. Estela. If I wanted to learn Italy, I could go to Italy. Okay, good. Just the pronunciation. If I wanted to learn Italian, I would go to Italy. That's right. If I wanted to learn Italian, I would go to Italy. Si quisiera aprender italiano, iría a Italia, right? Thank you, Stella. That's very good. What about number four? Who wants to try? Francisco. If didn't tell Helen what happened, you be angry if she knew. Mm -hmm. She'd be angry if she knew. Okay, estaría molesta si supiera. So I didn't tell Helen what happened. She'd be angry if you knew. If she knew. Good. Thank you, Francisco. That's very nice. What about number five? Jenny, and then Sonia, number six. It, it is, we have a map. I could show you where, where I live. If we had a map, I could show you where I live. That is correct. Si tuviera un mapa, podría mostrarte donde vivo. Thank you, Jenny. Very good. Sonia, you take number six, please. Seven. Uh, six. <laughs> no, number six. What role do you, if... <clears throat> what won't you do if you won a lot of money? That <clears throat> is correct. What would you do if you won a lot of money? ¿Qué harías si ganaras mucho dinero? Les comentaba en alguno de los, en algunos de los, de los uh, breaker rooms que win en este caso se entiende como ganar, pero ganar en un concurso como ganar la lotería, ¿verdad? Si estamos hablando de ganar, es decir, de vengar por el trabajo, el verbo es earn, que es ganar, pero ganar porque usted hizo un esfuerzo en el trabajo, por ejemplo. ¿Ok? Eso es earn. Hay una diferencia ahí. So, what would you do if you won a lot of money? ¿Qué harías si ganaras mucho dinero? Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Then number seven, who wants to try? Number seven? Amilcar. Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. um, seven, seven is not a very good hotel. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay there if I were you. That is correct. Very good. It's not a very good hotel. I wouldn't stay there if I were you. No me quedaría ahí si fuera tú. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Amilcar. Number eight. Who wants to try? Okay, Olivia, number eight. If we live closer to Miami, we will go there more often. That is correct, thank you. If we lived closer to Miami, we would go there more often. Si viviéramos más cerca de Miami, ¿verdad? iríamos ahí más seguido. Very good, thank you, Olivia. Correct answer. Number nine, who wants to try? Michelle. 
I'm sorry you have to go now. It will be nice if you have more time. That is correct. I'm sorry you have to go now. It will be nice if you had more time. Sería agradable, sería bueno, sería bonito si tuvieras más tiempo. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. That's the correct answer. Very good. Number 10. Volunteer. No volunteers. Number 10. Show me, show me. Natalie and then Alejandra for number 11. Natalie, number 10, please. I'm not going to take the job. I take it I take it if the salary was better. Well, pardon, were better. Both are okay. So that is correct. Thank you, Natalie. I'm not going to take the job. I'll take it if the salary were better. That's grammatically correct and formal. But you can say also, I take it if the salary was better. Lo tomaría si el salario fuera mejor. Okay. De nuevo, where is la uh, opción más formal para decirlo? Was también se puede, pero es informal. Okay. So that's correct. Thank you, Natalie. Alejandra, can you please take number 11? I don't know anything about cars. If my car broke down, I wouldn't know what to do. That is correct. Very good. I don't know anything about cars. If my car broke down, I wouldn't know what to do. Okay. Si mi auto se veriera, no sabría qué hacer. Thank you, Alejandra. That is correct. And the last one. It's a question. Estela wants to participate. Okay, Estela, go. If it's a good chance, one thing I anything in the world, what do what would you change? What would you change? That's right. Thank you, Estela. That is the correct answer. Now, if you notice, look at this. Tenemos would you change? El orden de las palabras ha cambiado un poco. ¿Por qué? Porque es una pregunta. Sabemos que en las preguntas vamos a colocar el auxiliar antes del sujeto. Entonces, if you could change one thing in the world, what would you change? Si pudieras cambiar una cosa en el mundo, ¿qué cambiarías? Okay. Very good. Very nice. Now we're going to do an exercise, but this time not in the breakout rooms. We're going to do it here openly. And that's the next one. Before we continue, do you have any questions about this exercise? Alguna consulta sobre este ejercicio que acabamos de hacer? No questions. No questions. Okay, no let's questions. continue. Your turn. Complete the sentences. Choose from the box and put the verb in the correct form. Okay. ¿Qué van a hacer acá? Tienen que elegir del cuadrito. Pero no solo es copiar y pegar, sino que hay que cambiar el verbo que está en amarillo a la forma correcta. Algunas veces es un hypothetical condition, a veces es, ¿verdad? An imaginary result. Básicamente lo mismo, nada más que hoy tienen que buscarlo en el cuadro. Lo mismo que estaban haciendo anteriormente. Uh, we are not going to work in the breakout rooms now because it's a bit late. It's 8.49. And uh, if we do that, we won't have enough time. So uh, let's do it openly here, okay? I want participants. Trate de participar, le invito a participar. Aun si nos equivocamos, podemos aprender de nuestros errores, ¿verdad? Lo peor que va a pasar es que yo le voy a decir que no está correcto y con mucho respeto le voy a decir cómo es, ¿verdad? We begin with Luis, then Imelda, okay? Luis, you take number one. Imelda, you take number two. Please. Imelda, you take number two, please. I'll buy that jacket if it were a little cheaper. Good. I'd buy that jacket if it I'd were a little cheaper. If... That is correct. Very good. I'd buy that jacket if it were a little cheaper. Alternatively, you can say, I'd buy the jacket if it was a little cheaper. Okay. Compraría esa chaqueta si fuera. Un poco más barata. Very good. Thank you, Luis. 
Imelda, do you want to try number two? And Alejandra, number three. I have a running nose today. I don't know. <laughs> if there was a good movie on TV tonight, um, no, I'm not. I'm, you don't know. I'm not focused. Today. Okay. I'm not focused today. I'm sorry. I, it's okay. Don't worry. I feel okay. Yes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, thank you for your participation. Okay. Um. Maybe Alejandra can help us, and then Stella. This room. I think good be good be nice. Oh. Well, if uh, we have some picture. Okay, that is the correct answer. <laughs> Thank you, Stella. That is the correct answer. But we skipped one. Nos saltamos una ahí, pero pero sí, esa es la respuesta de la número tres. Pero veamos, um, tal vez Alejandra. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. What about number two, Alejandra? There was a good movie on TV tonight. I will watch it. If there was a good movie on TV tonight, I will watch it. Correct. Very good. And then Estela helped us with number three. Okay, that was good. Also, this room will be nicer if we had some pictures on the wall. So, uh, Alejandra and Estela, thank you very much. What about number four? Who wants to try? What about number four? Michelle. If there wasn't so much traffic, the air will be cleaner. If there wasn't so much traffic, the air will be cleaner. That is correct. Thank you very much, Michelle. Si no hubiera tanto tráfico, el aire sería más limpio o estaría más limpio. That's good. Thank you. What about number five? Francisco. Life will be boring. If every day were the same. Okay, good. Life would be boring if every day were the same. Uh, la vida sería aburrida si todos los días fueran iguales. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Francisco. That's the right answer. Number six, please. Who wants to try? Number six. Estela wants to try again. Okay, Estela. If I have nothing to do, I wear bored. I wear bored. There is a problem. Because if you notice in number six, you have if I had nothing to do. This is the hypothetical condition. Here's where you use past simple. The next clause is the imaginary result. You need to use a different structure. Mm, uh -huh. I don't know. Okay, no problem. Uh, but thanks for participating. Maybe Jenny can help us. I would be bored. I would be bored. Okay, yeah, that's it. I would be bored. Si no tuviera nada que hacer, estaría aburrido. Okay, that's right. Thank you. What about number seven? Okay. Um, I saw Imelda raising her hand. I don't know if you want to participate, Imelda. Yes, I I want to try again. Okay, great. Number we seven. Invite, we could invite all our friends to stay if... If we'll have a bigger house. Can you repeat that? Uh, we could invite all our friends to stay if. We'll have a bigger house. Ah, take a look. The key here is the word if. If indicates the condition. If ah, indicates. If, if, if we have a, a bigger house. Correct. 
That's right. We could invite all our friends to stay if we had a bigger house. That is correct. Thank you, Imelda. Podríamos invitar a todos nuestros amigos a quedarse si tuviéramos una casa más grande. Okay. Very good. And Amilcar. Amilcar wants to try number eight. Let's go for eight. it. Uh, if, if we had more money, we would, we, both, we would buy a bigger house. If we had more money, we would buy a bigger house. That mm -hmm. is correct. Very good. If we had more money, we would buy a bigger house. Great. Okay, very good, everybody. Great. Now, there's one more exercise for today. Um, again, I will need uh, volunteers for this. Your turn. What are we going to do here? Okay, complete the sentences. Choose from the box and put the verb in the correct form. Well, sorry, this is not, these are not the right instructions. Let me change this. Me fue mal esto acá. Complete the sentences. Use your own words. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bad instruction. Okay. Let's, oops. ¿Qué pasó acá? Ideas. Queda mejor eso. Perdón. Okay, complete the sentences, use your own ideas. ¿Qué vamos a hacer acá? Fíjense bien. Aquí lo va a completar usted como usted se lo cura mejor. Por supuesto, tiene que ser gramaticalmente correcto. I'd be happier if. Yo sería más feliz si. No sé. Si trabajara menos horas al día, sería más feliz si tuviera más tiempo para dedicar a mis hobbies. Ok, sería más feliz si. No sé, no sé qué lo volvería a usted más feliz. Si tuviera más dinero. No sé. Ok, what about number two? If I could go anywhere in the world, si yo pudiera ir a cualquier lugar del mundo, ¿a dónde iría usted? Ahí me completa, ¿verdad? Number three, I wouldn't be very happy if, ¿verdad? no sería muy feliz si, si no tuviera trabajo, si no estuviera casado, bueno, alguno más va a decir que quizás sería más feliz, ¿verdad? pero no sé. Ok, uh, si no tuviera hijos, si, ¿verdad? Si, si viviera en la calle, no sé, lo que a usted se le ocurre. Number four, I would buy, no sé qué es lo que usted compraría, if, no sé en qué circunstancias, ahí tendría usted que completar. If I saw an accident in the street, what would you do? ¿Qué haría usted? And number six, the world will be a better place if, ¿verdad? El mundo sería un mejor lugar, sí. Póngale ahí lo que usted quiera. Utilice su imaginación. La cuestión es, fíjese bien, ¿verdad? El F, el F es el que nos indica la condición. Lo demás es resultado. Así que eso le va a ayudar a usted a elegir cuándo va a ocupar past simple y cuándo va a ocupar would y el verbo en forma base. Acuérdese que tanto la condición como el resultado puede ser afirmativa como negativa. Con solo que tenga lógica, está bien. Ya que nos queda muy poco tiempo, porque prácticamente solo un minuto tenemos, eh, vamos a dejar esto como tarea. Tal vez lo podemos completar en la casa, ya sea esta noche o mañana durante el transcurso del día. Y eh, en la clase de mañana va a ser lo primero que vamos a, a, a revisar con los que estén, ¿verdad? Voy a pedir voluntarios. Si son poquitos, les voy a preguntar a todos. Bueno, si son varios, entonces voy a pedir ahí participantes. Eh, complételo, por favor. Yes, Luis. Okay. Tomorrow don't have a... Ah, yes. No. Sorry, yes. sorry, sorry. I mean, Thursday. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, tomorrow we don't okay. have a class, okay, because it's a holiday. So uh, we won't have a class tomorrow. So it will be Thursday. And to make up for the class that we will not have tomorrow, we'll have a class on Friday, okay? Según el comunicado que vieron, en, bueno, el mensaje que se les transmitió por medio del grupo, los administradores del grupo, eh, nos aparece mañana por ser Día de los Santos Difuntos, no va a haber clase, entonces eh, esa clase se va a reponer el día viernes 4, vamos a terminar el viernes. Así que esta tarea la estaríamos viendo, la estaríamos revisando el jueves. Mejor, así tienen más tiempo, van a estar más tranquilos para hacer esto. 
¿verdad? Lo voy a poner ahorita en el chat. Lo voy a poner acá, homework. <coughs> Ahí está. Ok. All right, everybody. So, um, if you don't have any more questions, we're going to finish the class right here. ¿Alguna pregunta? ¿Consulta? No questions. No, no, no questions. questions. Okay, no perfect. Questions. Okay, everybody. Once again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your participation and your effort. Okay, so I'll see you on Thursday. Okay. Take teacher. care. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Bye.